everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, I present a version of Relativity Space's Terran 1 rocket. This will be part of my small rockets pack. I initially wasn't quite sure about this rocket because of the information on their website, uh, but taking a look at the payload users guide, I got a few more things, but still I don't have all the numbers. So this is a subject to change, very much so. Uh, but I decided after watching the Veritasium video uh, where Veritasium toured the Relativity Space 3D printing facilities that I might as well give it a go. Uh, that gave me somewhat more confidence that they knew what they were doing, <laughs> basically. Uh, you know, uh, when you just take a look at somebody's website, you don't know if they're legit or not. Uh, so, you know, even I can create a very good looking payload user's guide. So, yeah, uh, look, look, watching that video, I just said, okay, well, all right, there's something there at least. Uh, in making the rocket, uh, making the model, I, uh, they, the stuff they had there was a little bit grayer, it looked, you know, look, look more metallic, uh, but the payload user's guide make, made it look white, uh, painted. Uh, so I made it look white, but I did uh, try to give it a certain look of being 3D printed. There's sort of a moiré effect going on too, unfortunately. Uh, so the lines sometimes look a little bit, well, anyway, uh, it's complicated, but I tried my best to make it look the way it should. And uh, the engines, well, I'll do the engine stats on the way up. So throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, SAS did not hold on to that the way I would like. Uh, it looks like Smart ASS is fine, but I don't know what that was. Okay, anyway, maybe a launch clamp thing. 1.11 has some weirdnesses that I don't understand. So, it's supposed to carry 1.5 tons to low Earth orbit. We're just going out of Cape Canaveral here. Uh, the That's from the payload user's guide. The website says 1.25 tons, but the payload user's guide says 1.5, so that's what I have on it. And what I base the dry masses on, otherwise we don't have the dry masses. So the dry masses are based on the payload capacity. The engine stats, I tried my best, as I often do. Uh, it's about 120 kilonewtons in vacuum. It's about 102 to 103 kilonewtons at sea level for the sea level ones. And you can see the specific impulse going up there. Uh, we'll see what it peaks out as. I forget what I configured it as, but it was a healthy number. <laughs> uh, 330-ish. That's methane and oxygen. That's one attraction uh, with this rocket. Uh, so far, the small rockets pack, I didn't have any methane and oxygen small rockets, I think. My memory escapes me. It's still a real plume plume or technically nine real plume plumes. Those are nine Aeon 1 engines. So uh, we're getting at 332 right now. So methane and oxygen, uh, not crazy levels of efficiency, but okay levels of efficiency. It, they could be less efficient. And uh, if the engines are less efficient, that means that the dry mass of the rocket is less. If the engines are more efficient, that means the dry mass of the rocket is more. It's a little bit tough to tell which way to go with that. Now, uh, looking, uh, the burn time is correct because in the payload user's guide, they had the stage timing. So at least one version of the stage timing has these stage times. So I feel reasonably confident about that. Uh, it could be that the rocket carries more fuel than this but probably not too much more, because otherwise it won't get off the ground. Uh, the thrust, uh, the liftoff thrust is correct, based on what the payload user's guide has. We might be aimed a little bit high here. Separation. Now, the payload user's guide has separation of the first stage a few seconds before ignition. So there's, there is a gap there. Uh, there's actually flame out. It waits a little bit. Uh, oh, and we have RCS here. The RCS is supposed to be nitrogen. For now, I've made it just methane and oxygen. Uh, the, the RCS is not uh, attached to this. I'll show you how to put it together. This RCS is a separate part. Uh, so you can put your nitrogen thrusters on and sneak some nitrogen into the tank if you want. Uh, so yeah, it actually shuts down the first stage, waits a few seconds, then separates, then waits a few seconds, then ignites the 
upper stage, which is just a vacuum version of the first stage engine a la Falcon 9, except this is methane and oxygen pairing set. So yeah, uh, technically in the payload users guide, they say that they uh, sort of they shut this down and then circularized with a 10 second burn after a while. So basically it's supposed to stay low and then after, once it gets to apoapsis it circularizes as opposed to doing everything just in one burn. I don't know if they'll change that or not. So there's just a 1.5 ton weight and you can see there the thrust weight ratio is uh, like 0.93 or something like that when this ignites. And the stats here, 126 kilonewtons basically, and we're topping at a 355 second ISP. Again, not insanely high for a uh, methane oxygen engine. Could be less, could be more. It's got a 165 to 1 nozzle ratio, so it's a very, very, very big nozzle. The payload adapter is just a generic one that's part of the small rockets pack, so... They do have their own payload adapters, but I didn't uh, want to recreate those in particular. Okay, we are getting to orbit here. Uh, so again, they would do a separate circularization burn with the remaining delta V. I mean, it, well, anyway. You get the picture. We've got a little bit left. Uh, this is the payload to, it said 185 kilometer orbit. So we, we've already overshot. We seem to have a little bit of extra, which is fine. At least it's not crazy amounts. Let me go to the VAB and show you how to put it together. So first of all, I would take the payload adapter. Of course, you might have a payload already. So the payload adapter as part of the small rockets pack that is just called payload adapter with control core. And then type in Terran and that should bring up all the relevant parts for the rocket. Once the search function works, of course. Uh, so second stage and it has a central node. Maybe want to tuck the payload adapter in a bit. And then Payload fairings, of course, after putting your payload in. The payload adapter does have a decoupler on top. Uh, the Aeon vacuum engine looks like that. Very, I kept it very simple in this case. And then the interstage. And then the first stage tank. Might want to have some separatrons on the first stage tank. I didn't build them in. Of course, uh, staging should have the fairings after the second stage ignition, so that's how that is. And then the Aeon 1 en uh, engine, and there are nine of them. Sounds familiar, but, you know, it is the way of things. It's a fairly hefty rocket, considering it's just taking 1.5 tons to orbit. Uh, the video by Veritasium was the genius of 3D printing, but apparently there may be a downside to 3D printing in terms of high dry masses. I don't know. It seems that way. Uh, of course, none of this makes any sense yet because we don't have a payload up there. But 1.5 tons with a 75 ton rocket is basically what you get. Uh, so, I mean, it, I, I, it's about 2%. 2% payload mass with a methane oxygen system. So, yep, well, take it, take it or leave it. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it'll get off the ground and do things. I'll link it in the video description along with the rest of the small rockets pack. And I hope you enjoy. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.